This week's gospel from Matthew 14 is the story of Jesus walking on water. In my search for songs, I rediscovered Suzanne. Suzanne is by the Canadian singer-songwriter-poet Leonard Cohen, who died in 2016 and is best known for his classic Hallelujah. I learned Suzanne from the 1967 album, self-titled, Leonard Cohen Songs. And it was a regular, uh, as we sat cross-legged on the floor of the Campus Christian House at Indiana University on our Sunday night jam sessions. One of our number would be playing the guitar and teaching us the lyrics. Listen to how they read. This is the second verse. Jesus was a sailor when he walked upon the water, and he spent a long time watching from his lonely wooden tower. And when he knew for certain that only drowning men could see him, he said, all men will be sailors then until the sea shall free them. But he himself was broken long before the sky would open. Forsaken, almost human, he sank beneath your wisdom like a stone. Those lyrics were just different enough that they were appealing to an 18-year-old kid from a small town. It's not exactly biblical theology, but listening to Leonard Cohen with his spare accompaniment and his haunting, gravelly voice, you might catch a glimpse of my teenage angst, longing to be spiritual. Cohen's spirituality was complicated. He described himself as a Sabbath-keeping Jew. He also practiced Zen Buddhism. He was asked while on tour performing for Israeli troops during the 1973 Arab-Israeli War, um, how do you bring together Zen and Sabbath-keeping Judaism? Cohen said, Allen Ginsberg asked me that question many years ago. For one thing, in the tradition of Zen that I practice, there's no prayerful worship and there is no affirmation of a deity. So theologically, there's no challenge to my Jewish beliefs. I looked up the practice of Zen Buddhism and I discovered this affirmation. Zen emphasizes rigorous self-restraint meditation practice insight into the nature of mind and the nature of things and the personal expression of this insight in daily life, especially doing things for the benefit of others. That's according to David J. Kalupahana. That sounds a lot like the Wesleyan notions of growing deeper with Christ in holiness and sanctification through prayer and meditation upon scripture and especially the Wesleyan affirmations, do no harm and do good wherever you can, for whomever you can, for as long as you can. It's hard to balance the Christ's goals of loving others and doing good for others and caring for the least of these with our everyday living and with the often divisive demands of religious doctrine. So, I was delighted to discover another song about walking on water. This one's sung by Randy Travis. He sings about a great-grandfather of dubious history and life witness, that because of the love that he showed to his great-grandson, all those negatives were overwhelmed by his simple love. The lyrics to He Walked on Water read, He wore starched white shirts buttoned at the neck, and he'd sit in the shade and watch the chickens peck. And his teeth were gone, but what the heck? I thought he walked on water. He said he was a cowboy when he was young. He could handle a rope and he was good with a gun. And my mama's daddy was his oldest son. And I thought he walked on water. If the story was told, only heaven knows, but his hat seemed to me like an old halo, and although his wings they were never seen, I thought he walked on water. Then he tied a cord to the end of a mop and said, Son, here's a pony, keep her at a trot. And I'd ride in circles while he laughed a lot. Then I'd flop down beside him. He was 90 years old and 63, and I loved him. And he loved me, and Lord, I cried on the day he died, because I thought he walked on water. 
If the story was told, only heaven knows, but his hat seemed to me like an old halo, and though his wings they were never seen, I thought he walked on water. Yeah, I thought he walked on water. May you this week understand that Jesus walking on water wasn't meant to show off nor to impress anyone. It was the normal thing for the one who made the water and commanded it to peace. It was meant to, first of all, get to his friends as fast as he could, and then to increase their faith, their trust in him, and their courage in the face of frightening things. May you look to Jesus and see the one who loves you so much, he'll walk on water and calm a storm and take you by the hand until you're safe in the boat, because this is what God does.